guys you're yeah, welcome to my youtube channel my name is jessica kumi ibrahim and with me here today is a very special guest the woman that carried me for nine months gave birth to me and has been a strong pillar in my life all these years please help me welcome my mother pastor mrs modipola ibrahim <laughs> hi everyone trust you are doing well the title of today's video is because of Okay. Just as uh, this is what we have said, the topic we are looking at is the cross of Christ. It's the Lord. Hallelujah. So, can we quickly have a word of prayer, Jesus' name? Amen. Father, we thank you and bless your holy name. We appreciate you, even for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you, Jesus for sending your son Jesus Christ to come and die for us on the cross of Calvary. Father, we pray all this evening. Daddy, we pray, O oh Lord, that you encounter each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. And as many as you come under the sound of my voice this afternoon, Father, we ask the Lord that you reveal yourself unto each and every one of them in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father, for my mm -hmm. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you please quickly open your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 26 from verse 36 to 56. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to, so to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and said to Peter, What? Would you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again a second time, he went away and, and prayed, saying, oh, fa oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them, went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and, and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going, going. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And while he was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, with a great multitude, with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now his betrayers are giving them a sign, saying, Whomever I kiss is the one sees him. Immediately, immediately, immediately he went up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. But Jesus said to him, Friend, why have you come? Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And suddenly, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword, struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. His ear. But Jesus said to him, Put your swords into place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot now pray to my father and he will provide me with more than 12 regions of people? 256. Mm. How then could the scriptures be fulfilled that it's how how then could the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be that it must happen thus? In that hour, Jesus said to the multitudes, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and you did not see me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophet might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Thank you very much. So before we continue, 
I would like us to read the introduction. The introduction goes like this. The cross is the instrument of God for processing our salvation. Jesus went through emotional stress, physical molestation, scourging and beating before he was finally nailed to the cross. In order to deal with the natural man who is known as self, Mr. Flesh, Iniquity, Sinful Nature. So the natural man has so many names. And those are the names that have been mentioned, some of the names. And it's also known, this natural man is also known as the way of life every man inherited from death. Okay. So today, we are going to be looking at the emotional stress. You know, he, I told you he went through emotional stress, physical molestation, beating before he was on the nose to the cross. Mm -hmm. But today, what we are just going to be looking at is the emotional stress. Because a lot of people, they believe that Jesus just came and died on the cross and that's all. But there are some things that he went through before he finally was nailed to the cross. So, before we continue, I want us to quickly look at the Matthew 26, verse 36 to 38 again. I want us to, to, to look at it quickly. Matthew 26, verse 36 to 38. Mm. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the sons and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. Mm -hmm. In this passage, the Bible told us in that verse 37 to 38 that Jesus was exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. And he now took, you know, he told his other disciples to stay in the place. He now took only three that are close to him. Peter, James and John. He took them further and he now started explaining what he was going through to them. He said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful. Now, the question here is, why do you think he, Jesus was sorrowful and troubled? Why was he so sorrowful and troubled? Okay, Jesus was sorrowful and troubled because he knew what he was going to go through. He knew because he was God, so he already knew what, what was going to happen to him. He knew that he was going to go to the cross and he knew all what that entails. So he was so sorrowful. He was in deep sorrow. Okay, so from here we are seeing an example. Jesus showed us an example that even us, sometimes we might have challenges. We might have problems. But if you have a challenge now, maybe in your school or you know, a particular, maybe in your church or whatever, will you now go to the front of the church and go and announce to everybody that they see you are going through this, I'm going through that, so please pray for me. Is that what you do? What normally happens is maybe you will have some people that are closer to you that you can call on them and share with them. Maybe you have a prayer partner that you can share with, maybe people that are close to you, and you say, okay, please pray along with me. Mm -hmm. And then that's exactly what Jesus, Jesus is showing did. us here. Yeah. You know, you know, the Bible told us that he came, you know, in human flesh, you know, like the same thing that we can experience, Jesus also experienced it. Mm -hmm. And then he showed us how we can go about it. So but from here now, from what we have read, do you think you really wanted to die? <laughs> Nobody would want to die. Nobody wants to die. So I don't think a normal human being would just want to die like that. So I don't think Jesus actually wanted to die. And in fact, knowing the kind of death that he was going to die, it was a very, very painful death. So I don't think he would have wanted to die like that. Okay. What I'm seeing here is that he was flesh and blood, yeah. and he was like of like passion, like us. So he will not really want to die. Just yeah. like we said that he already knew what he was going to go through. Go through. Uh -huh. Because the Bible told us said he was made sin for us. 
so that we can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I want I would like us to read it from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. But he made him who knew no sin to be seen for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Mm -hmm. So here we can see that just thinking about that, uh, just thinking that maybe an exchange is going to take place, you know, that God is going to pour his own righteousness into us and then our own sin will be poured into him and it becomes sin for us. He knew that this will cause him to be separated from God and this has never happened before. Mm -hmm. From the foundation of the world, it has never happened to him before. Because the Bible told us that in the book of John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, it said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and said the same was with him in the beginning. And he said, By him all things were made, and without him was not anything made that was made. So it's that same person that has been with God from the beginning. It is now our sin that wants to separate him from the Father, and so this is enough to make him. To be very very sorrowful mm -hmm. so what did he now do and also mm -hmm. and also we can see that the sin separated him to the point that he had to cry that father my god my god why art thou forsaking me because god actually forsook forsook him at the cross like he had to say my god my god why are you forsaking me so i think it was because of that sin that god actually forsook him on the cross so he knew that God was actually going to forsake him. God was going to, our sin was going to separate him from God. So that was why he was deeply sorry. Okay. So what did he now do next? He decided to pray about it. Mm. So which means that anytime we are going through challenges and maybe we are facing some things that are making us to be sorrowful, mm. to be bleak, you know, that is affecting our faith, the best thing to do is to pray. pray. So pray. he decided to pray, and then he was praying. For, he said, "Adventure, maybe God will help me look for another way of fulfilling this purpose." He knew that uh, God wanted him to come and redeem man, but he started praying, "God, if it is your will, then let this cup pass over me." That was his prayer point. So, in other words, he trying to say, "God, if this thing could be done in another way, please let it be so." But the Bible told us that this is the main reason why he came. And yet he's still praying. This means that even we ourselves, we can know our purpose, we can know God's will, and yet we can still face challenges that will seem overwhelming mm. to us. Mm. Like in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5 and 7, I want us to read this. It shows us exactly the reason why he came. Verse Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, for a body you have prepared for me. A body you have prepared for me. It means that it is his body that is needed to carry that our simple nature to the cross. So that was why he was created in you know, a body. Okay? Mm -hmm. Verse 7. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book, of the book it is written of me to do your will oh god mm -hmm. so this is something that has already been written concerning him so even for you and i there are certain things that have been written concerning us we need to find out the purpose of god we need to find out what has god written concerning us concerning our destiny that we are going to fulfill and the fact that we know what god wants us to do what god wants us to become does not mean that we are not going to face challenges because we can see here that even Jesus, the Son of God, faced challenges. challenges. And what did he do? The Bible told us that he prayed about it. Because the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8, can you read this? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Thank you very much. So you can see that he actually humbled himself to obey God. 
he came you know, in the form of human being to come and fulfill the purpose of God, even for his life. But here, he committed the whole thing to prayer because he knew that by strength shall no man prevail. So he now told his friends to pray with him. What happened? He disappointed him. Have you? Yes. He disappointed him. So even sometimes for you and I, you know, we can, our friends can disappoint us. Let's imagine now. The Bible told us that for the first time he went and he came, he met them doing what? Sleeping. The second time, what happened? You were sleeping again. Okay. If it was you, how will you feel? I'll feel dis I'll feel disappointed in my friends. Yes. That why would they be sleeping when I ask them to join me in prayer? Like I'm, I have a body in my heart and I've discussed with you and I've asked you to join me in prayer. And then you are sleeping. I'll feel hurt by them by, by them sleeping. Can you imagine maybe you have a particular challenge and you told your friend, please, let's pray together. If I do so time, when you get home, maybe let's be meet on conference call and whatever. And then you have agreed and your friend say, don't, no problem, don't worry, we are in it together, we are going to pray this and that. And then, okay, you now got home, you now joined the conference, and then after some time, you had your friend snoring. You know, sometimes <laughs> it can happen like that. You, yes. can, you can be hearing the snoring. Maybe you continue praying and then you are not hearing any response from her. The only thing you are hearing is snoring. How do you feel? I'll feel bad. I'll feel sad. I'll feel sad. I'll feel like, how can I even depend on you? How can I trust you to, to do this one thing for me? So it is this happening. It is this Sometimes you feel lonely, you feel as if you are alone and that your problem. Yeah. So even Jesus, being human being like us at that time, you know, you will feel the same way. Mm -hmm. You will feel disappointed. You will feel lonely. But what did Jesus do after that? The Bible told us in the book of Luke, chapter 22, you know, that yeah. Jesus, you can read, you know, he decided to intensify his prayer. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. That's 44. 44. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like drops of blood, falling down to the ground. Intensify his prayer, and you know the emotions involved were so much that you know the Bible, the, the, you know the scientists told us that the tiny capillaries mm. in this, you know, in the sweat glands, they started breaking and mixing together with the blood. So it was as he was praying, it was as if the agony was so much that the, the sweat that was coming out was just dropping like blood. You can also see it in the in the book of Hebrews chapter five. Chapter 5, maybe verse 7 and 8. And let's see. In the days of his flesh, when he offered, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Vehement cries and tears to the him cries, cries and tears. tears so he was actually crying mm. with tears coming down mm. but as he was making the prayer that mm. god if it is possible mm. let this cup pass over me so it was not an easy time for him it was not easy for him to even pray concerning the matter mm. he was in serious agony you know the uh, the fact that his friends are no longer with him. Nobody was praying with him. He felt alone in the world. So he had to intensify prayer. He knew that it was only God alone that could help him in that situation. Even for us too, we should never, we should never give up. We should never give up. We should always intensify prayer. You know, even when things are becoming more difficult and you know and, and becoming more problematic, that is when we should intensify our prayer. Jesus showed us the example. What does verse 8 now tell us? Verse 8 says, Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Hmm. From here, what I'm saying is that even though 
he was the son of God. God did not answer that prayer because the will of God for him is for him to come to the cross and pay the price for us. Because you know there are some, you know, uh, some people used to say that God has three answers. He can say no, he can say yes, he can say wait. But a lot of people don't believe that God can say no. But God said no to Jesus here. He said, he insisted that you must go through this. And the Bible told us that he obey, he, he, you know, he learns obedience through suffering. Sometimes what God will ask us to do might mean suffering. And that does not mean that we should run away from suffering. Jesus did not run away from suffering. He went through it. He obeyed God. So for you and I, I we need to obey God even if it meant suffering. Suffering. We need to obey God even if it meant suffering. Now the stress was much. You know, as we are explaining that, maybe you can imagine that maybe a loved one went out and did not come back. And then if you tried the person through the phone, the phone was not, you couldn't reach him. You tried, you searched everywhere, you couldn't save the person. You can imagine the different kind of thoughts that will be going on through you in your mind. You can imagine the harmony. You can imagine different imaginations that the enemy will be bringing to you. You can imagine how you, the kind of sweats that will be coming because you, cannot, you don't understand what is happening to the person. You don't know where the person is. You don't know, you know. But what Jesus went through, the agony was even much more than that. It was much more than that. So, he knew the gravity of what was going to happen to him. But yet, he still obeyed God. So what can you say concerning this issue? of what he had to go through while he was praying and then he was praying and the sweat that was coming out was like drops of blood i know that sweat coming out of his body as drop drops of blood is a like a rare medical condition called hematidrosis and hematidrosis is caused is a rare is a very rare medical condition that is caused by extreme fear or extreme stress. And this condition it happens when, like you said, the tiny blood capillaries around the sweat gland because they dilate and they constrict. So when they dilate and then they burst or the, the rupture the blood now comes out along with the sweat because the blood it it it, it um it leaks into the sweat the sweat gland and then it comes out along with the sweat so that's why the sweat that will now be coming out will be like will, will contain blood because the blood vessels the capillaries surrounding the sweat gland burst so and that can only happen when someone has gone through like extreme a very extreme intense fear or intense stress that has caused the capillaries to burst so it's called hematidrosis so it means that jesus was in so much agony he was in so much um anguish and so much he was in deep sorrow for him to start sweating blood so it just shows what he really was going through. Mm, thank you very much. So even before Jesus got to the cross, he was already in agony. Yes. He was going through stress. Through emotional. He was going stress. through pain. Pain. And it was emotional. Mm. Just because of you and I. Mm. So if you are out there and Jesus was able to do this for you, what are you able to do for you? And he went through all this so that you can be saved. So if you are there and you have not yet received Jesus into your life as your personal Lord and Savior, it's important for you to do so tonight as we are going to pray. 
and maybe you have already received Jesus into your life, but you are not committed to living your life, even to please Him. I would like you to also pray tonight and dedicate your life unto Jesus yes. and promise Him that you want to live your life for Him. Because the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, said something to us. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and rose again. Mm -hmm. So, as many as are born again out there, and then you have received Jesus into your life as your personal Lord and Savior, Jesus is asking you that you should live your life to please him, no longer for yourself, even if it meant suffering. Because he himself did the same thing for us. Shall we pray? Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We appreciate you for the way you have spoken to us this evening. Thank you, Jesus, for going through all that you went through for us, O oh Lord. Daddy, we say, accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, even for as many as have not yet received you and are out there and are saying, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and Savior, Father God Almighty. We pray, O oh Lord, that you grant them the grace, O oh Lord, even to live for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you are out there and you are saying, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins before you. Yes, I'm sorry for the way I have been living my life in the past. Yes, I believe in my heart that you died on the cross of Calvary and were raised from the dead even to justify me. Yes, I received Jesus into my life. Be my, be my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So if you are you have not if you have received Jesus into your life and you have not committed, I also want to pray for you also that God will grant you the grace even to live a life that is pleasing unto him. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name Amen. we are praying. If you have taken that decision today, maybe you need further help, you can call on 80 3359264 So thank you so much Mommy for coming to my coming on my YouTube channel. I'm so so grateful. Thank you. <laughs> and then so Jesus went through a lot. If Jesus was willing to go through a lot for us, how do we respond to this? What can we go through? For him, what can we let go? What can we actually do for Jesus? We we can do what we can do is to give our lives to him, to surrender all at the feet of the mass, at the feet of the cross. So I hope we were blessed today. Thank you, Mom, for coming on my show. Yes, you can subscribe. Yes, thank you for watching my YouTube channel. Thank you. Please subscribe. Turn on the, the notification bell and then comment, put your comments in the comment section down below and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.